Welcome back to What No One Tells You. I'm Sarah. And I'm Chris. Our names don't sound right because they're out of order. We just, just say Chris and Sarah. So when we were changing our name from Let's Be Us to Chris and Sarah, we asked a professional musician friend of ours, we're like, which one sounds better, Sarah and Chris or Chris and Sarah? And he said, unfortunately, Chris and Sarah sounds better. I agree. And that's unfortunate, though, because the domain name for Chris and Sarah versus Sarah and Chris was way more expensive. Yeah. But at least my name's not Sarah with an H because that was even more That's expensive true. by a long shot. That's true. All right. So this is episode four of our little mini series called Wonderlust 101. Don't still don't love that name here. Fourth episode, but we're going with it. We've got one more episode after this. So today we're jumping right into talking about cultural etiquette and local experiences, embracing new cultures. I, this is for us why we love to travel and we love the beauty of places, but we really love the people yeah. and experiencing the cultures. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk about this, but before we really dive in, we have a couple of housekeeping things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. First, we announced a trip to Patagonia. Yes, we did. Oh. March 15th through 22nd, we are taking people with us to Patagonia and it's going to be Argentina and Chile. Mm, oh, we are so excited and it's a it's going to be a lot of fun. We led a trip to Iceland last year and it was such a blast being able to travel with people just in a different country. So much fun. I can't believe it's been exactly a year ago today that we were yeah. there and we were there this week. Yeah, man. So we're taking people with us. Um, not going to lie. This trip is pricey. We did the best we could to keep this trip cost down. Unfortunately, Patagonia trips um, were increased in price for 2024 due to inflation. Um, it's already expensive place. I don't want the price to deter people just because I know it's a bucket list place. We surveyed our audience and it was the number one place people wanted to go was Patagonia. So yeah. I know that people are interested. It is expensive. It's also physically demanding. It's a four or five um, on the level of difficulty, mostly because we do a lot of hiking. It's, there's a 13 mile hike and an 11 mile hike. There's also a four mile hike, um, different days, obviously. And there are rest days between them, but do know that if you want to go and you're like, oh, I'm kind of nervous about that. I don't think I'm physically fit enough. Like, I mean, just look at us. Like, we're going to make it. We'll make it. We'll make it. If we make it, you can probably make it. We will give you guys training tips of how to prepare for it. So, I mean, know your limits, know your abilities, and we'll help you prepare. You've got several months. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and also finding flights down to Argentina can be expensive. But I've got a whole blog post I'm going to link down below. I've answered all the questions about this trip from hotels to if I'll have roommates or um, what border crossings are going to be like, what airports to fly into and how to save money on tickets. I've put all of that into one blog post. I am going to link it down below. So if you still have questions after that, please don't hesitate to reach out on Instagram or via email and we will do our best to answer your questions yeah, and help. You'll find everything down below. So I'm excited about that. The second piece of housekeeping is please leave a review for this <laughs> podcast. It's It means the world to us, but it also helps the show out. It does. It really does. Whenever we get new reviews, that week is when we rank in the in the ratings again. Yeah, so it, it just allows n new people to discover new shows. Yeah, it's not about the ratings, it's just about like, oh, when they see that people are reviewing it, it must mean they like it, and so they'll yeah. push us to new people, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, reviews, ratings help. We'll just get right into the episode now that we've mentioned all of our <laughs> housekeeping things. All right, let's go. So cultural etiquette and local experiences. I mean, this is to me, there's two different ways you can travel. You can travel for the experiences and you can travel for vacation. You can also travel for work. That's like a whole nother yeah. niche now. But I think a lot of people get vacation and traveling for experiences, not confused, but they don't differentiate. So there are, there's traveling for the experiences and the culture, and then there's traveling for vacation. And if you're like us, you typically combine both of those into every trip you do, but there is a difference. And so I don't want to guilt people if they're going for their honeymoon and their main interest is to lay on a beach in Hawaii, this might not interest you as much. But if you're going and you're traveling for the sake of, you want to experience a new place, you want to see a new culture and meet some new people, this episode is for you. Well, and I think no matter what trip, you're still meeting new people and you're still experiencing a new place, but on a different level. Well, I'm thinking like what I, what I mean by that is like, you're not going for the experiences or the culture is if you're getting like an all inclusive resort at an American chain sure. in Jamaica, like you're something like, there's nothing wrong with that. But, and I mean, honestly, I think that'd be a fun experience sometime. I'm not going to knock it, <laughs> but I mean, it's not going to be the same as if you were doing eating the street food or you were mm -hmm. staying at a local hotel or hostel or something yeah. so um that's that's what i mean by different that's the, that's what i mean between travel the difference between travel and vacation but we're going to talk mostly about the travel side like the experience and the cultures and you can do as much or as little as you want on a trip 
But just jumping right in, we're going to start with before we ever leave home, the research, my favorite part. You research everything. I do. Don't ever argue with Sarah because she will always win. When one of the very first le- lessons that Sarah taught me, we were we in our bathroom we had two different towel racks, and <laughs> I would get the towels mixed up. No, oh, I can't. We were saying and, this. And she looked at me one day. She said, "Stop using my towel. Like it's disgusting. Use your own towel." And she's like, "The best way for you to remember what towels which is mine is on the right because I am always right." And every time we have to put something side by side, whether it's our ice cream pints in the freezer, <laughs> mine always goes on the right. That's like one of our funny little like, I don't actually think I'm always right, but it's just become like this funny little joke with us. of like everything is mine is on the right because right. <laughs> I'm always right. <laughs> Moving on. Researching. I love researching. I think it's the homeschooler in me still where I just love learning about things and mm-hmm. doing my due diligence ahead of time. I- I'm still going to make a fool of myself. I still s- mispronounce words. I mean, the number of comments we get on videos where they're saying, you said that wrong. You didn't do that right. You just, you do the best you can. That's yeah. all you can do at the end of the day. But researching, you know, what is appropriate in a culture? Like what are, you know, in certain countries, like giving a peace sign is like offensive. Like two fingers is very yeah. offensive in some cultures. Um, dress codes. What do you wear? Yeah. I mean, that kind of stuff is really important. Like you don't want to go to, you know, a Middle Eastern country and wear a tank top and Short shorts. I mean, that's yeah. offensive to them. Just because you're, you need to be respectful of wherever you're going because yeah. this is someone's home that you're going to. And that's how we always try to remember, like, how would I want somebody to treat my home? Yeah. And most of our audience is Americans. Yeah. And so we're addressing like Western culture. Yeah. Here, and so we're, we're talking to Americans right now. And this can apply to, to anybody in the world. But typically, when we talk to foreigners about Americans, the first thing that they say is, you guys are very loud. Very loud. But I sometimes I'm offended by that. And other, I shouldn't say I'm offended. I know what they mean. Because yeah. we are loud. We talk loud. But also, I think sometimes people get confused with, like, Americans are really happy, too. Like, we mm-hmm. have, like, this, we are unashamed laughers. Like, you know, yeah. Asian culture, especially, they're very, like, reserved. Even Scandinavian culture. They don't really, like, boisterously laugh. Americans, like, show their teeth and laugh. And yeah. It's part of our culture, so I'm not going to, like, shy away from being happy, but you do need to, like, tone it down in another country. Yeah, so, like, yeah. even in Asia, I was really careful. In Korea, I was really careful not to, like, ah! Like. Yeah, yeah. And the best the best way for you to find out about those cultural differences is really just to ask somebody. Ask somebody, yeah. I mean, if you have a way to interact with someone from that, that country, like, maybe who has spent time there or has traveled there extensively, besides online, just maybe be like, hey, what do you think of this? Like, I read this online. Like, is this really true? Like, there was one thing for Korea that we read. Mm-hmm. And we talked to one of our friends who had spent time in Korea. And he was like, that's really dated. Like, they don't really actually do that. It was it was apparently disrespectful if you put, leave your chopsticks sticking into your rice. Like, that's oh, really disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, because I was like learning all these norms and everything before we went over, trying to like make sure I didn't, you know, show the bottom of my feet. Because that's really disrespectful over yeah. there. Like, all these little things. And that one, he was like, I don't think that one's really yeah. practiced too often yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just ask people, ask your friends. And and I know Sarah said, don't, you know, try not to, you'll find information online. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, sometimes you have to ask people online, whether that's in Facebook groups, and that can be a good resource. But therein lies, you don't know, you don't know that person on the other end of the, their experience, what their experience is. And so it makes it a little difficult. Um, but you can find Facebook groups that will help you. Yeah. And I would say, just be careful in how you phrase the questions. Make sure you, I, I, you just have to show respect. Like you don't, you're not trying to be condescending. Like, do I really have to do this in this culture? No, just be yeah. like, Hey, can somebody educate me on what the proper clothes, like what it would be respectful for me to wear in your country yeah. or something like that. Just, you know, you're treating with respect because these are people and this is their home and what's unusual to us is not unusual to them. Yeah. And I think that's the bottom line of this entire episode is respect. Respect. Yeah. doesn't mean you have to agree with everyone and everything that you experience, but just trying to see it. I mean, that to me is like what travel is all about. It's just trying to experience a new culture, a new place mm-hmm. and seeing a new point of view doesn't mean that you have to go and change your mind of who you are, but it means experiencing that and maybe say, okay, I understand why you think that way. I still disagree with you, Yeah, but I get it. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of what to me travels all about. It's just learning. And I can tell you how many times I've had my mind changed while traveling. It's really cool. So doing the research ahead of time, avoiding rude gestures, 
sensitive topics. Like for one, we were in Thailand and it's really, really frowned upon to mention the king. Like they, mm. when we were there, the king actually passed away mm-hmm. and then his son was set to take the throne. I think he's since taken the throne. Yeah. But we were there and the king died. But even then, like it was like, you just don't talk about the king because the people loved their king yeah. so much. And it wasn't like a, we're scared of our king, but it's a- More of an honor, a respect thing. We shouldn't talk about it. And yeah. so our friends were just like, who lived in town, they're like, just, you know, just even if it's praise, like just don't mention the king out loud. Like just don't do it. So like there's these little things that, yeah. you know, you got to be aware of and that's something you can totally find online easily. I, and I think the best rule of thumb, no matter where you're traveling- Keep politics out of your conversation. But that's not even politics. That was just like day to day. I mean, his picture is in every restaurant. Yeah, yeah. That, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you're just like, who's that? Oh, that's the king. But I oh, can't say that. <laughs> so very, like, you just want to respect the culture because everybody handles, you know, that's a monarchy. It's different than what we have in the U.S. Free yeah. speech is not a thing like it is. That's where Americans, I feel like, get in trouble. It's like, we are so used to free speech here. But one of our good friends, he always, he jokes and he says, I'm an American citizen. Do you understand <laughs> what my rights are? And the thing is, is people think that they can say that outside the country and it doesn't work. You're like, yeah, you're an American citizen, this but in America. It, it's not America. And it's it's a different place. It's a different world. It's a different culture. We need to save our friend here and say he's saying it ironically, like he he's is. making fun of himself. <laughs> he <laughs> he's not being serious. But but we've we've all seen interactions like yeah. that. You just have to be. Yeah, you just, just have to aware. be respectful. Yeah, be aware, figure it out, do the most you can. But then today you're not going to be perfect. I mean, I know I've messed up in cultures like I've said the wrong thing or I've done the wrong action and you know it's a learning process most people are really gracious when they realize you're a tourist I mean Chris and I look like tourists no matter where we go pretty much except for Scandinavia Iceland people thought we were locals in Iceland that's the only place that people thought we were locals from yeah everybody in Iceland speaks perfect English and many a time people would like start speaking to us in Icelandic it was Mm -hmm. really funny I was like no 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 I'm like no 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 (laughs) definitely American (laughs) yeah drip coffee please drip coffee please (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, so just do your research ahead of time. You're you're a guest in their country and treat it like you're a guest in someone's house. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about the best ways to experience a culture. Like, we, I wouldn't say we're foodies. Like, we enjoy food because it's a way to experience a place. Like, I enjoy experiencing a place through food as much as I do hiking. Mm-hmm. And I think that's such a cool thing to experience in different cultures because the food varies so let's talk about like culinary experiences i i think food is one of the best ways to experience a culture i do i do think that and because it it's prepared differently all over the world sometimes it's about tradition or sometimes it's just i don't know it can be very very special and so one of the things that i like to do no matter if we're in the states or abroad I like to ask the the waiter, the waitress, or whoever's working at the restaurant what they would order. Yeah, that's always a good idea. Yeah. Asking what they would like to, what they would recommend. But more than just eating the different foods, like, I mean, they're prepared differently. They sure. smell different. It's different ingredients. Be aware of allergies. Chris has a nut allergy, yeah. so you always have to be careful. Yeah, you have to be careful with that nut allergy. But on top of that, it's just the experience of eating, like, I feel like food is very personal. And that's one reason why we like it is there's something special about sharing a meal with someone around a table. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a cup of coffee, sharing that, it just, it gives your hand something to hold. Kind of takes some of the awkwardness out. It does. But it also is something like a common denominator instantly. Like you're all sharing this one thing together. That wall, whatever wall you have up when it comes to strangers, it's sort of broken a little bit because your defenses are down. You're enjoying this good cup of coffee or you're slurping noodles you know (laughs) but you're sharing something like somebody is sharing a meal with you or you're buying their dinner or they've cooked for you or whatever that looks like there's something really special about that so different cultures have different ways that they experience meals whether they sit on the floor or whether they you know have several courses or they eat late at night or like Mm -hmm. whatever that is but the entire process of food is just so unique so yeah. there's a few different ways you can do that I mean, you can totally go out there do your research and figure it out on your own we love just walking down the street mm-hmm. seeing where the lines are of the locals that's the that's favorite the way. that's the key especially for street food mm-hmm. like if you are looking for some good hankering like street food oh just look at the lines see where the locals are go there go yeah and those are the places that you're not going to really find online is like some yeah. random food cart on a corner in the middle of a major city like yeah most of the time those aren't online but if you see a line there gonna be good yeah and i will say this it doesn't hold true always but typically if you see sort of a hipster restaurant abroad like if it's you know good clean branding and it looks nice Very aesthetic the food probably really stinks yeah, it probably does it does i mean sometimes the coffee shops are really good and i don't yeah. want to say all their food's bad but no. 
the good stuff is going to be the stuff that you see where the locals go, not the stuff that's catered maybe towards the foreigners. Yeah, the exactly. stuff that's catered towards the locals. Exactly. So, which is also good because a lot of times it's the best price stuff too. Mm-hmm. If you eat like the locals, you're going to save a lot of money. Yeah, buying other food besides what's you know, traditional in that country is way more expensive. Yes. Yes. Usually, usually not always, but um. So yeah, you could do the research ahead of time. You can walk down the street. You can book a food tour. We've done. One yeah. food tour. We've done um, just one, uh, sort of two. Well, our one. friend and La- our friend Larissa took us around in Brazil too, but yeah. we did one in Korea. Yeah, we yeah we that was a great experience. So fun. It was fun. It was fun because in a food tour you get to hear about the history of the food, why it was created, mm-hmm. why people love it, how it's prepared differently. Um, another way to do that is cooking classes. Yeah. You know what? We've never actually done that. We've really wanted to. We did one cooking class in Korea and it was a kimchi class. Oh my gosh, class. we did. I forgot we did that. We yeah. created kimchi and I I loved it. I was awful at it. Well, one, I was trying to film, but two, I'm just not very good with a knife. And everybody in that cooking class was looking at me like, why are you here? No, they weren't doing that, but you were struggling a little bit. I was struggling. I'm surprised the, you didn't lose a finger. The teacher gave me a gold star, and I think it was just for participation. <laughs> she was so sweet. She invited, <laughs> that's one of those cool things. Okay, so both the Koreas are really good examples because the Korean food tour was from a local Korean girl. So you get a, sh- she's sharing her culture with mm-hmm. you. She invited us into a market. It's a very popular market, but she was sharing, like, hey, this is my favorite dish. I ate this all the time as a child. Like, you guys need to try this. Like, she knew which vendors were better in the, in the market and it's so such a busy famous market but she had already pre-arranged everything she does these tours all the time so she would go up to the booth instead of us standing in line she already had everything organized like she walked up and got the you know eight servings for the eight people in our group like she already had it all set in it was great i can't say that every food tour is going to do that but our experience was really good so she was sharing her culture with us and then the the kimchi cooking class it was this lady it was another airbnb experience and she um just literally invited us into her home. So we met at a market. It's where she does a lot of her shopping. Um, it's right next door to her condo pretty much, but yeah. she took us shopping. We learned what to buy for kimchi, all the different variations, everything that you could put. There's, there's hundreds of kinds of kimchi, which I didn't know. Yeah. But we she, do now. We do now. <laughs> we went to the market, we bought it, and then she took us back to her home. We made it in her house. We made it in her house, in her home kitchen, and then sat around her dining table and ate kimchi. It was such a cool experience. And, um, the way we found, and the way that we found these experiences were from Airbnb. Both of those were Airbnb. We've had a few good Airbnb experiences. I wouldn't say it's like, I don't, I don't know if that's always the way to go, but those were both good ones. Yeah. I think it's a cool way for small business entrepreneurs kind of to get a yeah. start, but Airbnb takes a large cut. So that's kind of why I'm always like, yeah, eh. if you do some more, di- you know, diligent research, you could probably find a lot of of cooking to, you know, independent cooking tours or something like that. But those are great options when you go to a different uh, culture. Yeah. And you can read a lot of reviews on those. The food tour actually came recommended by some friends who had already been there and done the exact same one. And that was really worthwhile. Yeah. So food, we love food. Could go on and on forever about that. Let's talk about connecting with locals. I feel like that's kind of what we've already touched on. Just, you know, meeting the locals through the tours is a really fun thing. They are excited about meeting you. Yes. And a lot of, so when you're outside of the U.S. of A, mm-hmm. a lot of... Of A. Of A. <laughs> you just say it like I that. I don't know. I don't know why I said it. Like, but when you, like, if you're an American and you're outside of America and you're in a different country and you tell somebody that you're an American or they ask where you're from, you say, I'm an American, they immediately want to like, they want to talk about like, why do you love their country or why are you visiting? Mm-hmm. And it, this is like a really perfect opportunity to interact with people because they're interested. They've already, a lot of times we don't start the conversation. It's the locals that start the conversation with us. And then we go from there. And I think some of that's because you and I both end up in absurd places sometimes. Like we just kind of go into these small towns. I should be, we are regularly rent cars in countries because we love driving. Yeah. But we'd, they'd be like, why are you here? Yeah. What, why are you in our town right I now? Like, being, welcome us, but yeah. We stopped at a rest area in Brazil, and it was sort of like think like a low key Brazilian Bucky's, you know, <laughs> like they had a buffet food, court food of, kind of yeah thing. food court and everything. But it's in the middle of nowhere in Brazil, and everybody there was Brazilian except us. And you could tell they were like, "How the, the heck, heck did you in here? Go? Yeah, how did you find your way here?" <laughs> but most people are really excited to share about their culture. So when they ask you. 
they, I just really wanted to experience it or, you know, whatever the reason is that you're there, yeah. but then ask, what do you like about it? Like, what do you think we should do? And I, every time people will give you an amazing list of things that you've never found on Google. Cause yeah. I mean, as much as I love writing travel guides, like a lot of times it, we, a lot of travel blogs, we do write some of the same stuff. That's why I try to make my blogs personal because I want to give people the experiences that we've had something that's a little different. Um, but even in that, a lot of the same tips could be, you know, repeated over and over. So like talking to a local, you're going to find stuff that I've never found. Like they're yeah. going to have their personal favorite spot and it's going to be so cool and yeah. so unique. Yeah. And they're going to tell you what's busy. Like, don't go there. That's a tourist spot. Yeah. Go to this spot. It's even better. Or it's, um, you can get through all the fluff. Yeah. They are just going to shoot straight with you. Yeah. So that's really cool. But speaking with locals is really important, but let's talk about language barrier. How mm. are you dealing with language barrier? Cause we're both very American and that we, and we, we stink at language. I try as we might. Yeah, we try. And so it's always courteous to even start the conversation with a hi in their language. Yeah. Hola. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> That's I all I got. I think of another hi. Like, Hola. Yeah. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Me amo, Chris. Um, <laughs> it's, anyang. Yeah, it's anyang. Um, so it, it's always nice to at least attempt to try. I remember being in Thailand and I was trying to tell the taxi driver, take a left. And yeah. I was, I tried my hardest and he just chuckled and laughed. And he started giving me an English lesson right there. Or an, you I, sat in the front with him, didn't you? Yeah, I, I was I, in the back an, of that truck. <laughs> yeah, he started giving me a Thai lesson. He's like, no, 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 this is how you say left and right. And like instantly, like if you show an interest at all, just a little bit of their culture and their language, they will take you to the next level. Yeah, they're, yeah, just do, it's that comes back to that respect. Like, just do your part, learn hello, thank you, please, goodbye. Yeah. That stuff is goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, bathroom, all, like, always try to figure out how to say bathroom. Yeah, when all else fails, download the offline version of Google Translate for yeah. that country. That saves me so many times. If nothing else, like, I hate to do this, but at least hold it up and like type it out in English and then it'll translate and hold it up. And usually they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking yeah. about now. And they have Google translate. Typically they'll have Google translate too on their phone. We've dealt with a lot of people. Uh, we've dealt with a lot of locals who, who do that. And they're, they'll try to translate Spanish or Korean to English yeah. for us. And the, that translator, it works, but it's not perfect. And it, sometimes it's weird. You're like, what are you trying to say? And so you just have to read body language Try to figure out, yeah. you know, be patient with them and they're going to be patient with you. The louder you talk does not mean that they understand you better. And so just get that through your head. Like, hello. hello yeah, you're just screaming at them. I, for whatever reason, people think, oh, if I speak louder, they'll understand. I'm they like, do the same thing to us, though. I'm oh, like, they do. Sorry. Yeah. And some countries are much more, like, I hate to expect people to speak English, but it is a universal language at this point, like most countries, when they learn another language, it's going to be English. Mm -hmm. um, it is more prevalent in places like Europe, even South America over Asia. I feel like Asian countries don't speak it as much yet. Some do, but it it's a little bit more uh, behind on, not behind, I shouldn't say behind. Um, Asia doesn't speak it as fluently. It's yeah. a very different thing over there. And I will say that as much as we try and we do try, mm -hmm. Our experience, a lot of times, in whatever country we're in, we will say hello in their language. They'll say hello, and then we'll come to come to find out they know a little bit of English, and they no longer want to talk in their normal language. They want to talk in English, and they want because they want to practice their English. Yeah, and that's it's always hard because Chris and I really want to practice our language. Yeah, and you know to try for them, but at the end they're like, no, 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 like you know, English is such a it's a business tool now it's a business and language. they all want to practice it and then it helps them. And like the Uber drivers, they get better tips if they speak yeah. good English. So we would practice with them and it's actually sort of a nice way to be able to give back. Like, and just you get, you get to know them too yeah, really yeah. well. And an app that we've been using and I really enjoy is called Duolingo. It's yeah. free and you can go and learn whatever language you want from free from your phone. Yeah. That's, it's a good one. I'm terrible at being consistent in that. But it's a nice idea. I'm aspiring to be fluent in another language one day. Um, so connecting with locals, you could also do like homestays. You could do staying in a local hotel versus an American chain. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that in another episode, how we often do stay in American chains as much as that sounds boring. Um, but there's a ton of different ways to connect with locals. At the end of the day, just walking. Just make sure it's a safe area, but just walking. Walk. 
just walk yeah. around and see what's around and see how the people live. Yeah. And eventually somebody will talk to you. We were in a <laughs> pub in Ireland and people wanted to talk to us there and we were. That's also an Ireland pub. Yeah. Like they don't want to talk. <laughs> they were talking. all three drinks in anyway. So. Guinness is in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ireland. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, all right. So let's talk about participating in cultural activities. I, this is something that's, we've had a few cool experiences. I remember my first experience traveling abroad I was going into ninth grade I'd saved up my money and I went to Scotland like that was I got a chance to go with a musical group I was in and we went to Scotland and I thought it was the most amazing thing and it was beautiful and I loved it but I remember one night we were walking around and even from you know or going into ninth grade my favorite thing of that trip wasn't the tours or the museums it was walking around the cities at night I got to go around with um, some of the older people in the group and experience it and one night we were in the small town in Scotland and they were having like this traditional dance. And so we like ended up in this dance hall, like dancing with these people. And it was so fun. And I obviously had no idea what I was doing, but I always remember that I was like walking around is the best way to find it. Like we just walked by and then the doors open. And they're like, come on in. Or yeah. I'm not going to try to do a Scottish accent, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is the best way. And then like Rio. Yeah. Yeah. Ball. yeah Rio. Yeah. 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 So it's, Walking around or even so sometimes hotels or events will say, hey, like there's an event happening. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want a tour or do you want us to set up a, a, a way for you to go? And so you can pay for that. And it doesn't have to be a legit tour. It's just somebody getting you to that event. Yeah. Which is Brazil. That's what yeah. we did in, for Carnival. Like we're not. America of used Carnival is like really crazy. Like it is a party. And yeah, it is a party. It That's a, Brazil in a nutshell. Brazil likes to party. Brazil, like they are just happy, they are the happy people. people. Man, they're just like, whoo, yeah. Just they are so, so And they're so beautiful looking. Oh, they're also pretty. That's oh, just, just, yeah. Just, that makes me so sick. Like they're pasty, so pretty. And pasty white and the sun's bouncing off of us, blinding everybody. That was fun. But yeah. Brazil, so Carnival is a party. It's expensive. It's really busy. But we happen to be in Brazil right before well, we were there for carnival but we were in rio right before it happened yeah and we heard i don't remember who told us this but if you're there in rio before you can actually go to the rehearsals of the of carnival of the schools in the in the samba drum which is the where they do it where it's like that big i think it's like half a mile or a quarter of a mile yeah. or something it's this really long it's the famous one where you see it on tv you've seen it and they have like the bleachers at the side but so just to like explain what carnival is it's not just one of the massive parade. These are all, they're called Samba schools and Samba schools are very rich and the traditions of different neighborhoods. So it's like a huge honor if you get to be in your Samba schools, like carnival performance, all these different schools compete to get in. And it's like this huge community activity. And then people come from that community and support the people. So during the rehearsal nights, like we went, I think there were three Samba schools practicing. Mm -hmm. And so they were in like, they weren't in their full dress up or anything like that, but they were playing their full instruments and they had to walk the full course, I think. No, maybe they didn't walk before course, but anyway, they were doing their whole thing, but it wasn't just, it wasn't tourists they're watching. We were some of the only tourists there. Yeah, we were the only tourists there. We, I remember specifically this one Brazilian gentleman, he was speaking in Portuguese and then all of a sudden he looked at us and with the southernest drawl he could muster, he's like, where are y'all from? Like that. <laughs> and because of it, he knew, he just knew we were from America. He lived in Atlanta for a little bit. Yeah. That was what was funny. And it was so funny, but yeah, we were the only tourists but, there but what was cool about that experience more than just being some of the only tourists there is that it was seeing the community supporting their community so they all come out and they cheer so it's like the sisters and the moms and the best friends and the spouses of the people in the summer school they're cheering for them because to actually attend the royal carnival is really expensive and it's just free to go to the rehearsal we paid it for a tour guide because we never would have found it on our own i think it was like 20 bucks a person but it was yeah. totally worth it she translated she got us down we actually got to like walk with the samba school part yeah, of the time can... so cool anyway that's a lot to talk about for one experience but i say all that to say you can get some really cool experiences you can and sometimes you can search for those experiences you can find different things online or whatever you can look at calendars and sometimes the, like sarah said those experiences happen to you mm -hmm. whether you're walking along the street and you just stumble in to a dance or yeah. You know, like Sarah mentioned earlier in this episode, we were in Thailand and suddenly the king passed away. Yeah. And this was the longest reigning monarch in, his, the history in history of the world. Yeah. And, something years. and so n this was a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to experience something sad. But it was like the whole country of Thailand, uh, like 
nobody, we're not going to be able to experience that again. No, that was a once in a lifetime thing. Once in a lifetime thing. And so that there, when the king passed away, the entire country um, all wore black. Mm -hmm. All your clothing had to be black. And then they had these special ceremonies throughout all the the countries. Yeah, vigils. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. But we couldn't have planned that. No, it was, but I remember it so vividly. Yeah. It's just one of those things like being... I don't know, just being open to whatever's going to happen. Yeah, and I remember be wearing, we were wearing black clothes. We wore, we went out to the mall the next day after the King passed, and we bought black t-shirts yeah. and all that. And um, Sarah had somebody stop her in the street and said, thank you so much for, for honoring I our people. That. Yeah. 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 So, oh, man, no, that's got me thinking, like, because th- these are the memories, like, I mean, I mean the most, just thinking about, like, the place, like, it's just the once-in-a-lifetime kind of things. It doesn't have to be anything major, just, like, those are the moments that stand out the most. Yeah. You really get to connect and, I think, experience the culture. So that, That's when travel becomes human. Yeah, it really is. So we've talked about connecting with locals, um, participating in cultural activities. Let's talk about, to sum it up, let's talk about mindful travel and ethical travel. I mean, this is something that is pretty important to you and me, and it's something that mm-hmm. we're, we learn almost daily another thing that we could do better. Yeah, There's always something we could do better. But there's definitely, it kind of comes down to that whole respect, but it goes a, a layer deeper of, I believe that every action has an impact on somebody whether good or bad and how we travel is going to impact those people that place we hope that our impact is a positive one and it's not just hoping we try to plan and make sure that we're being respectful that we aren't you know supporting things that maybe are really shady we're not you know buying from something that's really sketchy and we're supporting something that's you know got child labor or something like Mm -hmm. that you know and just doing your diligence and saying like okay what what are some issues in this place and how can you be aware of what you're going into to make sure that you are not, you know, going and supporting a business that's really like a front for another thing, you know, like yeah. and there's, I can't even think of anything offhand except for like, I mean, massage parlors in Thailand are all over the place and massages are so cheap, but you just kind of get to know the ones that are like authentic and then maybe ones that are more trafficked. Yes. or prostitution or something yes. like that. Like you can just kind of tell. Yes. And even, I mean, Thailand's another great example for, you know, uh, or let's, let's say Egypt, you know, Egypt, yeah. riding camels. Yeah. And, and people want to do that, but the camels aren't treated correctly. They're treated pretty poorly. Yeah. yeah. And Same for elephants in Thailand. That's what I was going with. Yeah. Sometimes. And there are good ones you can go to. Yeah. There are. And, and that's where you really have to take the extra step Yeah, to, to find out who, and that, that's asking locals, that's asking, you know, um, just trying to find ratings online as well, trying to just figure out who who are these businesses and yeah. what is the impact that they have. Yeah, I took a journalism class in college and I remember the building was named after a guy and my journalist teacher asked, he's like, could anybody tell us, tell me who this building is named after? And nobody could answer. And he's like, this is a lesson. He's like, always ask questions, always ask who it is or what it is. Yeah. And that's always stuck with me. of like, okay, I'm at this park right now in Colorado. Well, who is the person this park? Like, why is it called peanut Lake that we're at? Yeah. You know, stuff like that. It's probably cause it's shaped like a peanut, but you know, it's <laughs> always asking those questions and staying curious. And yeah. it's not just for your own experience, but it's also to protect whoever you're interacting with. Yeah. And that's, that's a good rule. Just stay curious. Stay curious. But I, I do want to disclaim and say, we all make mistakes. We are still yeah. learning. We've done some very ignorant things in traveling, and it's been completely accidental. And honestly, people show a lot of grace. They, yeah, they are really they gracious. But just try your hardest. That's yeah. all it comes down to. Everybody's learning. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, everybody's learning. Yeah. All right. Well, I think this pretty much like wraps up. That's a shorter episode. I think this was a good one. I lo- yeah. I mean, it's just like got me excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is why we like to travel. Yeah. This is like traveling and meeting people, being a part of, being a part of cultures. It's just so, I, that fills my heart. Yeah. It does me too. I, I like that. Let's, let's say real fast though, that you don't have to go far to get that. No. I mean, you can go, you can go 15 minutes from our house in Tennessee and you can be somewhere entirely different oh yeah entirely different and you would never think that no and go i mean even going across the country i mean like if you're based in the southeast you know maybe chattanooga nashville atlanta is your home something like that and you travel to seattle or san francisco Mm -hmm. or even denver or whatever it's going to be very drastic very different 
and people like there's even um, social mentalities for, Mm -hmm. you know, what, what's expected and what to wear. And it's funny because when you start learning where people are from in the States, you can tell, oh, that person's from, you can tell that person, you can see they're from Washington or you can see they're from Kansas or yeah. yeah. There's a lot of flannel. They're from Washington. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) That kind of thing. (laughs) Yeah. And they're from the P&W. But I mean, but Sarah's right. You can go out your back door and then you know, 25 minutes later, you're in an entirely different place. And it may not look as so different, but it is different. It is different. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of, I'm a Cincinnati's Bengals fan. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, well, they're good now. They well, haven't historically they're, been they're, good. They're going to be okay. <laughs> but they absolutely hate the, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, it's do. it's a big rivalry. But And ironically, your dad's a Steelers fan. Yeah. Ironically. <laughs> yeah. So I chose the Bengals because I, you did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. But if you were to drive to Pittsburgh you know, and wear a Bengals shirt, you would probably experience culture a very different way. Mm-hmm. Same thing for wearing a Pittsburgh shirt in Cincinnati. And, and I mean, like, if you really... What an Americanized version of I, that. I mean, like, <laughs> like, but, like, let's go on the West Coast. If you were wearing a Seahawks jersey to San Francisco, oh. that, I mean, those are fighting words. Same thing for 49ers in Seattle. Like, yeah. uh, it's... That's a really, actually, that's pretty, I feel like that's a pretty good example of saying, like, Cultures are different. It doesn't have to be. Cre- they, I don't, don't know. Have where to, I'm going with yeah, that. no, yeah, it's, it's just it's not. Everybody does something different. They yeah. may look the same on the outside, but they're different. Yeah, yeah. So wherever you are in the world, just be curious. Be curious. Yeah. That should be our new tagline for this podcast. Yeah, it should be. Well, we have one more episode in this series, and then we have a lot of fun guests coming up. Oh man, I'm so excited about some of the episodes we have coming up. Yeah, we've got some. Mm-hmm. We've already recorded some of the episodes, and they're really. They're just interesting. Like it's me, it's us being curious and asking yeah. questions. And I love that. Yeah. So, Hey, if you liked this episode or like this show, please, please leave a comment or leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. Um, it helps us a ton. Like we said earlier. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if you have anything that you think we missed and you want to let us know, you can either send us an email, drop it in the comment line and, um, we'll see it. We will see it <laughs> <laughs> with you and your pronunciation. I don't know. The US Anyhow. of Hey, I'm just trying to prolong <laughs> the podcast. So. Just got it. All right, y'all. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks for listening to What No One Tells You with Chris and Sarah. If you have a comment or question that you want answered on the air, be sure to send us a message to hello at chrisandsarah.com or you can call or text our phone number at 423-825-9572. Thanks for listening.